So in the fourth quarter of the Western Bulldogs game, Hibbo, with two minutes to go, was running fast down the wing and, and he had a little bit of a grab in his hamstring. Sometimes we can push these hamstring injuries a lot quicker, but having had one before and having had a couple over the last two years, um, we need to be more realistic with his timeline and just be patient with the injury, give him enough time to, to settle and do the proper rehabilitation before he gets back to playing. Yeah, I guess um, you know, the form was pretty good up until I started getting a few of the niggly injuries and the hamstrings, but now I feel real refreshed and mentally I'm back. I really want to play footy because I've missed the, you know, I've played one game in about seven or eight weeks or something now and I just want to get out there and play. It's real frustrating watching because I just want to be out there and to finally be back uh, injury free and have the opportunity to play. And I feel refreshed in my mind and in my body and I'm telling the physios and the docs and everything I'm fine and I've trained, um, I've done everything I can do up until this point so I'm back full training with the guys. And um, yeah, I'm pushing for selection this week, whether they pick me or not. Um, it's a different story, but yeah, let's hope they do. It's looking really good. He's just got to tick a few boxes this week as far as running quick again, training with the boys, um, doing a full skill session. Um, but he'll get through that with no problems and, and I think he's ready to perform at the, at the highest level come Saturday. Last time I had an ankle issue as well, I wasn't able to do a good block of running or training uh, due to the ankle, but this time around the ankle was fine and I was able to do a good three weeks of um, you know, endurance running and get some real volume into the legs, so I've lost about two kilo and feeling really lean and, and fit, so this time around um, you know, it's a bit, a bit better of a preparation to come in and play. Hibbo's fantastic to work with, he throws everything at, at the program um, with, box, with bike sessions, pool sessions, really has a crack, really keeps his fitness at a, at a pretty high level. Um, so when he comes back to play, um, he'll, he'll return in really good shape and he, and he sort of won't miss a beat as he starts playing, playing AFL football. Am I still doing my rehab program, like weights, or am I done? Back with the boys? Probably a rehab program, just less. No more what box? The weights training is a little bit different when you're coming back from an injury, so I work close with Wadey um, in strengthening the hamstring again and um, getting the healing process right. So the last few weeks have been really good. There's been no hiccups along the way and um, yeah, feeling strong and ready. They're long days sometimes. You get in before eight and you're not out till five and yeah, you know you, you might run 10k on the track and then you're in. You do an hour of weights and then you do an hour on the bike and you know you get through the run. That's fine, but when you got to think of the hour on the bike at the end of the day, I get home and I go to sleep because it's a, such a long day and it's, it's pretty tough and intense training. So Job's program, he started off with a couple of weeks of, of pretty low intensity stuff post-surgery post where he was just sticking his legs over on the bike and some swimming. But then he got four or five weeks of really good running in. And it was a really good running block where he could keep his fitness up, like a mini pre-season kind of thing. And then uh, in the last two or three weeks, he's just been um, ticking all the boxes he needs to do to play. So acceleration, change of direction, running fast, kicking the ball. And he's been moving around um, in that space for two or three weeks. And he's just got to tick a couple of boxes this week as far as uh, going off the mark acceleration wise, but he'll be ready to go come Saturday. Job's recovery has been really right to the letter that was set out initially. His recovery has been fantastic. Uh, as you know, on Saturday he did a full training session. Uh, he will just be reintroduced with the boys all week this week and uh, without any hiccups, which we shouldn't have, he should play this week. There is a bit of pressure on. Um, I think when, when you have a 12 week laugh, it's, it's harder. But I think Job's on record as saying that you don't run uh, city horses in country races. So I think he'll be knocking on the coach's door very early on this week and putting the pressure on to be, to be in the team on Saturday rather than playing in VFL. Certainly in the last week, it's been really handy to have them both together because they can do all the training together. We can do really high intensity one on one work with them. If, when you're in rehab and, you, and you're just on your own, that's sometimes tough. You might be doing it against a coach or something. They've been really, really pushing each other well each of the bike sessions, each of the swim sessions, they push each other along. They're hard trainers, so they're ready to go, and that puts them in really good stead come, come the weekend. 
Yeah, it's been good testing each other out and on Saturday we had a good training session and um, you know, we were pushing each other out pretty hard. We're both pretty competitive and I, I didn't want to lose to him, he didn't want to lose to me so I think both of us together we um, pushed each other pretty hard and yeah, we'll be better for it. Yeah, I want to be um, playing finals as well as everyone else and you know, if we get that opportunity then that would be great. Um, we've got to get there first and do everything right uh, step by step uh, on the way. G'day guys, Mark Bagula here. Just like Mark Tubby Taylor, some of us Essendon players have hidden talents of our own. While I love laying a good hard tackle in the back line on the weekend, I also like to travel and find some good surf overseas. I just love getting out in the ocean just on your own or with a couple of mates and just relaxing and having a bit of a surf. Favourite surf spot in Victoria would be Gunnamatta. It's a beach break so there's lefts and rights there. A um, bit unpredictable with the swell, but um, you can surf anywhere from six foot to two foot. And this year we've got a surf trip planned with um, Ariel Steinberg, Patrick Ambrose and Jace Ashby. Uh, we're heading to the Mentowies, which is in just west of Sumatra. Yeah, we're not really sure what we're going to get, so we're going to be on a boat for 12 days. and We could get anything from like 10 foot to two foot. Yeah, I'd like to head over to Hawaii at some stage and surf pipeline. No, I'm a bit of a cruisy surfer, like I'm not too radical, I just like to uh, carve along the walls and that. Yeah, I've had a few bad wipeouts where the boards hit me in the head. I copped a fin across the eyebrow a couple of times and got a few stitches there. Best surfer at the footy club, uh, it's pretty competitive in our little surf gang, but um, yeah, probably I'll have to say myself. <laughs> Gala Ball that hasn't happened for a, a number of years now. It used to be an annual event in the Essendon Footy Club calendar, but uh, yeah, it was an initiative to get the players more involved in the night and make the night a bit more interesting. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was a bit of that, and then obviously targeted a few guys that may be looking to do something like that post post footy. Can you give me? A, can you chase up a pen for me, please? Tiny Holly, come on down, you big unit. <laughs> Did he call himself Tiny because he actually is Tiny? You can ask you, so you, if, when you invite him up here, you can... No, as in, as in have you se physically what seen him? I would just do it if I dropped the F-bomb tonight. I would kill you. Why? Everyone love it. Oh, Luca, he's uh, tried to put his little Thorpedale slang on a lot of things. Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't try and... Uh, I'm the more serious one, so I thought... Uh, I think you saw uh, both our personalities on the night. I was a more serious and calculated one, and then... Uh, as I said, he was more of the prankster and jokester. You've got time backstage. Yeah, sweet. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Essendon Gala Ball. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so much great. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't mind, I enjoy it. Um, I'm probably not setting out to be uh, an MC. Um, I don't think I've got the stink voice like Craig Willis or anything like that, but um, yeah, I'm comfortable doing it, so I don't mind doing it, but uh, it's not something, uh, as I said, that I'm setting out to do, or it's a career goal of mine post-football, um, but when opportunities are, arise, I'm, I'm happy, happy to go and uh, dip my toes, so to speak. Everyone knows Sonny from Antler, uh, but it's some uh, luggage from Santler. Uh, sorry, from uh, Antler, from Sunny. So I just mentioned Santler. I've got to use that again, don't I? Oh, good. There'll be a couple of stuff ups along the way, but you just got to roll with the punches. All right, guys, can everyone take their seats again, please? There was one of the, one of the young boys been pesting me all week to, to mention his name up here tonight. So um, it's his birthday today, Alex Brown, number 24. So. There you go, big Al. Happy birthday, mate. So make sure everyone you go up and have a, give him a kiss, give him a cuddle and get a photo. Yeah, I've known Licker for a long time, actually. We played cricket and junior footy together, so he hasn't changed much, to be honest. He's, uh, although when we were younger and when he first got drafted, he was a bit of a wild child, so I think he's a partner. 
has uh, straightened him out a fair bit and uh, obviously having a child too, he's grown up a fair bit pretty quickly. Yeah, he's a great character and he's he obviously seen his ability to play footy and his ability to forge out a career under difficult circumstances and obviously the injuries he's had too, he's, he's struggled to find continuity in his footy but it's been a credit to him with the long term injuries he has had and some serious injuries too that he's been able to do what he has and been a great serve in the Essendon Footy Club for 12 years so it'll be sad to see him go. Personally, I was absolutely wrapped that you um, decided to coach us this year, obviously watching from afar. Um, as a kid, loved watching you play, but then watching what you did down at Geelong. Um, from coaching this year again, has it rekindled your interest to, to stay as head coach, potentially somewhere else in the future? I've enjoyed it. I knew that I would, but um, yeah, it's been, it's been a good year. I've, 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 I have enjoyed it. I've liked the, uh, the challenge of it all. And, um, like if we had lost six games in a row, it wouldn't have mattered to me because um, I might, Paul wouldn't have sacked me up losing six in a row. It wouldn't have mattered either, actually. <laughs>
As they were, they were leaving, Mum came back for a second kiss and it was, yeah, it was pretty embarrassing. I don't think I'll live it down. Yeah, well, David obviously gave, gave me a bit of advice. He said, just keep it simple and don't try to do too much and you'll just, you'll fit in. I was more nervous in the rooms and then as soon as we went out there, it just it was all a bit surreal and then just went into it and it felt pretty natural, so yeah, it was good. First, the young man making his debut, Fantasia. First touch was a little handball in, inside 50, but it went straight to the opposition, so it wasn't, wasn't a good one, but yeah. The next one was a kick, so I was more happy with that one. Playing VFL, you just you want to strive and, and play AFL, and I've, I've always wanted to play AFL ever since I was a little kid, so it was just a dream come true, really. We're here today to see if an Essendon fan can earn their sash. Over here, we've got Maxi, and he's going to attempt to handball five balls through this target in 30 seconds. You ready, Max? Three, two, one. Oh, he jumped the gun. Jump the gun. It's all right. Keep going. You can get another footy here, buddy. Keep going. Everyone's watching. Don't get nervous. Come on now. Two, one. No. Bad luck, mate. So there we have it. Another Essendon fan has earned their sash. Well, that might be debatable. If you'd like to earn yours, tell us what you're prepared to do via our hashtag. One way to earn your sash is to visit the Kia website and see the many great deals currently on offer across the entire Kia range. So visit kia.com.au and find a deal that's right for you. You can even leave the sash on if you like. I've known Jason Winlick from the days he walked in as a teenager at the end of 2002. Now, obviously, I retired after playing with Jason for uh, eight years at the end of 2009, and then uh, he's been a great friend ever since then. Firstly, on field, uh, horrible run with injury throughout, but whenever he did play, he always made Essendon a better team. Amazing speed, uh, elite kicking skills, and a great mark above his head, so he could play as a full forward, he could play in the midfield. So he was uh, very versatile as a footballer and off-field. He was always the life of the party, fun to be around. Um, yeah, loved a joke, um, loved a footy trip. Yeah, he was a fantastic teammate to have. Yeah, playing 100 plus games uh, and the career he had is, is fantastic. He's been dogged by a lot of injuries, uh, which is unfortunate, but um, yeah, he's maximised his talent. He's a, he's a true leader and got great skills and endurance. He's a pretty loyal sort of friend to me. Uh, we don't catch up uh, a lot on a week-to-week -week basis, but we talk on the phone a fair bit. Um, yeah, he's a, an Essendon person through and through. Um, yeah, he's a, uh, a true friend uh, and there when you, when you want him. He's a bit of a loud mouth. He's uh, always chirpy. Um, but he thinks he can run his own race on his rehab. He thinks he knows better than the physios. Um, so he's sometimes a difficult character when we want him to do something, but uh, it's always a smile on his face and he's, he's just been a fantastic player. Wendelik might be third man up, he's up! Wendelik, wonderful! Yeah, he's never lacked energy and he's never lacked courage to keep on running and there he comes from deep in defence though. Seven points to margin. Yeah, Jason's uh, pretty mature uh, for his early years and uh, he was pretty confident, uh, maybe too confident at times uh, when he first came through the doors, but uh, he just knew, knew football inside out. I think he'd make a great coach. We could see that from early on, just with his knowledge on the game and, and the way he directs uh, you know, his players out on the ground. So, no, he's, he's been cheeky at times, but he's also got a serious and genuine side, you know, and, um, you know, whenever you are down, He'd always find a way to pick you up. Uh, so, you know, he's, he's got most qualities you'd want in a good teammate. I actually looked after him when he was 15 and 16, and even then he had stress fractures in his tibia because uh, Darren Buick trained him too hard. Um, so I've really known him since 15. Um, he's had a very, very unlucky career, and uh, with two major setbacks, well, actually three. He's had two operations on his back for a severely prolapsed disc and then that followed up with a reconstruction to his knee and you put those two together um, he's had a lot of hamstring injuries so he, he's been amazingly resilient amazingly resilient and uh, he's, he's sort of a leader among the boys and particularly when the boys are injured he's the one out there encouraging uh, he's been terrific terrific for our club and I wish he wasn't retiring from that personally but
My name is Mark McVeigh, and I strive to give the Bombers a lifetime of value throughout my 232 game career. I've cooked up a massive stitch up for the Essendon boys. I'm heading back to the club disguised as a Nenna on a supporters tour to fool the youngsters. The young lad sniffed out something earlier, but overall it's gone bloody well. It's time for the big finale. Hopefully, me and Winders can pull it off. She's a bit fresh, get the scarves on, girls. Wrap yourselves up, ladies, we're going out. Audio. It had come down to this. I was back out on the track, and unbeknown to everyone, was about to be involved in a big bloody altercation. We could get a piggyback. <laughs> the boys were still all laughs, but I was focused on the job at hand. Oh, oh. Yes. oh it's a beautiful thing. Yes. <laughs> they look good, not as good as me in my prime, but good all the same. Yes. <laughs> the anticipation was killing me. I was desperate to finish this off. Nice, oh, Jason. Yes. That's a big three there. <laughs> 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 Oh, she's... Yeah, right. the camera's gone. Is this for real? What, she's no, 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 no. Do you guys have a... Do you have, like, a medical problem? Should we try and lift her up? Do you want to try and get up? Do you think you might? Yeah, you can. Take it, please. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Take it, please. <laughs> no, we were talking about it from the day that died. Oh, the boys good. loved it, but I need to show these young lads that this old duck could still run rings around them. So it was to the strong room for a quick pump up. Oh, okay. It was time for this Nena to make her comeback. This old duck needed a lie down and a good cuppa. True Value Solar, powering a lifetime of change. This has been a Fox Footy presentation.